Hi guys, I bought a new book to read to you guys. It's called Miracles Will Happen. It is a guidepost book. I seen it and I had to get it so I can read it to you guys. Okay, the story today is called Goodbye Bluebird by Sinya Laird. People send in their stories. How do you say goodbye to those who meant the world to you and gave you the childhood you otherwise wouldn't have had slowly? My grandparents were my lifeline. They gave me hope when I had none. They gave me unconditional love that I didn't receive in my own house. They gave me strength, pearls of wisdom I still hold dear, and the stability I craved when I was young. Most importantly, they gave me the strength and courage to become who I wanted to be. They were truly my angels on earth. They both lived long, productive lives, but that doesn't take away the pain of losing them. Grandma died of Alzheimer's, and Grandpa passed on two years after with a stroke. Tiny pieces of my heart went with them, and I didn't know how to make repairs. I couldn't even visit their graves for a long time after their deaths. Grandma had slowed down quite a bit before she passed, but we always had our afternoon tea together. I'd go to her house every afternoon for tea and biscuits and to hear about her amazing adventures from her youth, even on the days when she couldn't organize her thoughts. Grandpa was still active until the day of his stroke. Our thing was watching birds. Look at that one, he said one afternoon. That's a bluebird. They say those birds are signs of good luck and often have the spirit of a loved one who has gone on but is still out looking for you. I've heard that about cardinals too, guys. When a cardinal's around, that means a loved one is coming to visit you. Really? I asked. How do you know? Oh, Grandpa has ways of just knowing certain things. Well, who is that? Someone watching out for you? Grandpa was quiet for a while and then smiled. Yes, I believe so. He comes to see me every day. Will you be a bluebird for me too? He looked at me, his blue eyes glowing in the sunlight. Grandpa will always be watching. All oh, these sad stories. I scrunched my face into a frown. But how will I know it's you? You'll know, darling. You'll just feel it. When the time came for me to leave Winnipeg to move to Edmonton for a job opportunity, I decided to visit my grandparents' graves to finally say goodbye. It took three tries before I could get near where they rested. The first time, I only made it to the gates and had to leave. The second time, I went into the information booth at the front of the cemetery to get a map to where my grandparents' graves were, and then I left again. Finally, a couple weeks after, I took time off around my birthday and decided that visiting my grandparents was one of the things I was going to do. I had to. I stopped at a flower shop to buy a purple lily and a holder. I went right up to the grave road where they rested. I clutched and the warped flowers in my fist, took a few deep breaths, and they slowly got out of the vehicle. I tiptoed through the spooty green grass apologizing to my grandparents, eternal neighbors, as I tromped across them. I crept on until I came to a massive headstone in the middle of a short, crooked row. A lump lodged in my throat. I wanted to run, but my feet stood their ground. I heard my grandma's voice. Don't let fear feed on you. Use it as a source of strength to keep you moving forward. The headstone was larger than I expected. The outside was gray with shiny flecks that sparkled in the sun. The middle of the stone was polished black, shiny like marble, with their name etched across in thick, bold letters, Beatty. At the base, two nameplates bore my grandparents' full names, George Wilford Beatty and Lillian May Worth. Someone had planted pansies between their nameplates. A light breeze tickled the branches of the sturdy elm tree behind me, and it danced a time with the pansies. I knelt to be at eye level with the headstone. Then I traced the beautiful engraved letters with my fingertips. I'm sorry it took so long to come, I said with a squeaky whisper. I'm sorry you've been kept updated about what's going on. And even if Uncle Greg didn't tell you everything, I'm sure Grandma sent Grandpa out to make sure. I laughed weakly. When my fingers ran out of letters, I fidgeted with the grass under my knees. 
I was so angry with both of you for leaving me alone. I never got to say goodbye or to thank you. It took every ounce of strength I had not to leave. Letting all the feelings rise and be felt was the hardest thing I would ever do. I knew if I could make it through the moment, anything else I did would be okay. That I'd be okay. Thank you for giving me my childhood. For being there when I needed you. For letting me be a kid. Thank you for saving me. Without your presence, I would never have had the strength to come this far. Warm streams trickled down my cheeks and the breeze gently tossed my hair over my shoulders like Grandma used to do whenever she wanted to see my face. I can't promise you I'll never mess up again, but like Grandma said, I'll take what I need and I'll let the rest go. I'll never derail again, at least I'll try not to. I shoved a plastic flower holder in the middle of the dancing pansies and put the oversized purple lily inside it. I won't be back for a long time. But I know what Grandpa meant in the hospital. You'll always be with me. I touched my head, my heart, and then the headstone, the same way Grandpa said goodbye to me. As I walked back to the vehicle, the aching emptiness undoing to for a long time was finally filled with contentment, love, and happiness. I looked back one last time at the headstone and was surprised to see two glorious bluebirds perched on top of it. Bluebirds are rare in that area. They stared at me. Sorry. They stared at me and I didn't think it at all strange. They watched me drive away. When I drove around the corner, I saw two blue streaks shoot up over the trees, circle, then fly off. I smiled. Goodbye, Bluebird.